Hello, my name is Cal Mullane from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today I'm here to introduce the question of how to market anarchy at your local campus. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a college campus. It could be anywhere with this high volume of traffic of people walking around. And in terms of uh, marketing anarchy, uh, I have some good supplemental resources. I'll only give these out after having the discussion, after having the conversation. It's just like passing it out afterwards, you know, here and there and haphazardly. Um, I find it to be a good supplemental area to pass out after the conversation, after the three questions to anarchy, which is uh, a video that I did last year to kind of go over uh, what I found to be the most efficient way to have these conversations to present the argument against the state and then finally, you know, answer the questions about what about the roads and the monopolies. And so we have here the agorism pamphlet, the voluntarism pamphlet, the peaceful parenting pamphlet, and the what is anarchy pamphlet. And of course, Liberty RV is an umbrella organization, so there's a lot of small little groups underneath there as well. Uh, we have our friend uh, Ty, great uh, anti-statist, good friend of mine. He runs the uh, weekly Stoa meeting here in Richmond, which is like Stoicism. And so, of course, presented on here on this table, many thanks to uh, many contributors uh, who are watching the show right now uh, from that funding. Thank you so much. And so we have uh, the books here to kind of stabilize the pamphlets. We have our newsletter here to kind of bring back uh, the conversation. You know, we have a lot of monthly events. We have weekly meetings. <laughs> so we have uh, everything from Peace of Parenting to Bitcoin um, events here in Richmond. So I guess these things will naturally grow though, right? So in the beginning, don't set out to try to do too much at once. You know, as, as the more members that come in, the more um, freedom-loving folks that are drawn to the message, you know, the more it will start to grow organically. Uh, and of course, how do I invite the question? I have a sign. <laughs> the uh, ask me how voting is immoral, or you can use the ask me how government is immoral. This is a little bit more direct, and I found this one to be a lot more uh, efficient with uh, with that as well. But today being election day, you know, I brought out both signs. So you can have both of them, and that invites the question. So you're not out there provoking. You're not out there in their face. You're not, uh, you know, you want to be in an area in which they come to you, right? Out of humor or out of uh, curiosity, right? Best places to have their defenses naturally lowered to kind of have these conversations. I would say like the most important conversation that you can have with anyone, right? About freedom, about real freedom in our lifetime. Uh, and so in that regards, you know, you don't need a camera set up or anything like that. I just do this for uh, an anthropological study for a documentary and to also show you how to have these conversations, how to respond to a lot of the questions that uh, the people have in terms of anarchy and freedom in the state. Um, so I always ask though, you know, would you like to be recorded? I'm here to record this conversation. Uh, and sometimes people don't want to be recorded. Technically it's a public area, right? Uh, you're always at risk for everything until the notion of public uh, property is uh, dispelled. Uh, and, and abolished but so that's the, the setup that invites the questions and I would say for like every interview recorder there's about two or three that I can't show or share because uh, they don't want to be recorded themselves so with that hopefully that answers the question how to market anarchy and uh, if you guys have any other questions in the user comments down below I'll answer them as best as I can so with that I'm gonna go out doing what I do best and see you guys at the victory party take good care to give up your property, you still have yeah, to pay your taxes. Yeah. Because if you did have a freedom of economic choice and how best to spend your own money, how best to allocate your own resources, government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes, yes. right? So that's how government is immoral. This organization then only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems, versus though the plurality of non-violent solutions that us three up for here already share. So what are your thoughts on that? What would be your solution? All right, so the solution is, uh, all right, so what, what I advocate then is for a free society based on consent. For example, there is just no factual evidence uh, that you can show me that you have a contractual relationship with government, right? But you can show me your contractual relationship with Netflix, AT&T, Sprint, your mortgage oh, okay. company, apartment complex. We can have rules. Uh, what government is then objectively, they have a monopoly on the services you and I want. I want roads, I want law, I want security, I want first class mail, I want alcohol, ABC, right? They have a monopoly on alcohol here, right? They have a monopoly on delivering pieces of paper to your post office. It's illegal and criminal, for example, for FedEx, UPS to deliver pieces of paper. They can only deliver packages. So that's what it is. So I want the freedom, though, to cancel and subscribe as it was from a real business service. I want the economic freedom to compete against those monopolies in order to provide a better service or product that will not be harmful or abusive to you, the consumer, yeah. right? So when we advocate against government, I'm not saying I don't want the service, I do, but I want one in which we have that economic freedom to decide ourselves. Yeah, okay. Right? So that's what I mean, I guess, in the regards, the, the alternative would be a free society that's consensual, yeah. voluntary, contractual, 
versus one that's cohesive, oppressive, non-contractual. Yes. Right? A politician can tell you what you can and cannot do with your own body, but you can't tell that politician the same thing. Yeah. Right? So totally privatized what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like, like pure capitalism? Yeah, pure capitalism. I love capitalism. Yeah, me too. I absolutely, I love capitalism. That's beautiful. <laughs> that's beautiful. Beautiful words I've heard today. Okay. I love it. <laughs> and then that's what we're part. So we're a non-political organization. Uh, we're, we're done with politics. Uh, many of us Richmonders are, are. So we want to go in that society, create a new foundation of society based on capitalism, based on respect for private property, uh, based for, for for this wealth and values that we really share against nonviolence, and go in that direction, mm -hmm. away from politics and government that seeks to trick us into compromising our moral values. Okay. Cool? Cool, very cool. cool. <laughs> I'm Cal, by the way. Cal? Oh, Sugar Shack, great yeah. place. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. You are? Cat. Cat? So what did you think? It was interesting. Yeah? yeah. All right, cool, cool. Can I uh, enlighten you with some pamphlets then? Absolutely. Awesome, awesome, All right? So that's how government is immoral, and that this organization then only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems, versus though the plurality of non-violent solutions you and I already share. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, I just, uh, I guess the government uses coercion to keep us from destroying ourselves sometimes. Um, but at the same time, I feel like that is a justification for the economic machine that is war, I guess. Okay. So you feel that without government, we would attack each other? I think that's what... A lot. I think that's what I've been taught. Yeah. Right, right, right. No, I agree, I agree. I've been yeah. taught that too. Yeah. <laughs> I've also been taught the government provides you security then, right? Okay. To prevent that, right? Yeah. Like, how do we prevent us from attacking to one another? They say, well, we provide you security, like the police, right? Now, what if I were to tell you then that the Supreme Court has ruled in many, many cases that the police have no obligation to provide you security? They have no constitutional duty to actually protect your life, liberty, or property. Now, if I came to a house with such a contract, you know, you slam the door in my face, like, get the hell out of here. You're, you know, you mean I'm being forced to pay for a service in which you don't have to provide, right? So what you just uh, described right now exists now. So in the, um, the police, though, in that kind of security, it's, we don't have that. It's not allowed. The only time they actually provide security is when you're detained, right? Um, so, but it, even at the same time, you're also presuming that maybe perhaps uh, like people are inherently bad then? Yeah. Yeah? Where does that come from? Uh, it's from political theory. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I've been hearing this whole semester. Right? Do you feel your friends would ever treat you that way? Uh, I mean, honestly, I, I think that when I think about my own actions that I, I do act selfishly. I mean... There's nothing wrong with selfishness, yeah. right? Um, but... I don't think that would necessarily predispose to always act violent. Right. What I want. Yeah. Right. And violence, well, like the way we define it then would be placing a person in an involuntary yeah. position without their yeah. consent of choice, right? Yeah. I rape, murder, theft, and assault. All violations are self ownership, right? Yeah. Uh, and you conclude like you don't use that at all to solve your problems. And you, I guess you can safely presume your friends and your interpersonal relationships don't do that, right? Yeah. Um, not because out of fear what government would do, but because they actually value your friendship, yeah. right? They actually really like you. Uh, no point they ever think about trying to steal you from your hurt you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now I imagine that's the same way with like my interpersonal relationships and maybe with a lot of people's interpersonal relationships. Otherwise you wouldn't be involved with them, right? Uh, you want to be involved in abusive relationships, right? If the person kept hitting you all the time, it's like, look, knock it off, right? Like that's the end of our friendship, you know, so to speak, right? Um, so then that kind of relationship though, uh, the non-consensual kind is what you have with government. Right, because there exists no factual evidence that you can show me a contractual relationship with government. Right, so all that government has, then, when we're talking about security, is that they have a monopoly on the services you and I want. Because I do want security. I want law. I want roads. I want first-class milk. I want alcohol. Right, ABC has a monopoly on alcohol. <laughs> right, that's why you don't see it at your Kroger or Walgreens. They have a monopoly on the distribution, retail, sale of alcohol. So that is what government is. They have a monopoly on the services you and I want. Uh, in which we don't have the freedom to cancel or unsubscribe as we would from a real business service. That, would, that is voluntary and consensual. Netflix will never point a gun at you to subscribe. But two years ago, they tried to increase their prices, you know, trying to be sneaky overnight, and people are like, oh, forget that, cancel and subscribe, go to Hulu, right? You have choices. When government has a monopoly on these services, you don't have choices, right? You can't even compete uh, entrepreneurially to say, I can buy you a better service that's not going to be abusive or harmful to you, the consumer, right? Um, 
So with that in mind, I guess, uh, what, what are your thoughts then on, um, I guess, government then as a whole in areas of like protection then? Uh, yeah, I never thought of like, um, like the police force as a monopoly um, or just, I guess, any of the government. Right? Programs. Yeah. yeah. Like the post office, monopoly on delivering pieces of paper. It's illegal and criminal for you to compete against, deli uh, to, to deliver pieces of paper. And as so much as illegal and criminal for like FedEx, UPS, and DHL to deliver pieces of paper. But that's why they're $16 billion in debt. That's why they're threatening to cut off Saturdays. That's why they're, because they have no competitors. They can do whatever they want. You know, quality depreciates. You know, you, you walk into a FedEx, it's nice and clean and well kept. You walk into a post office, walls are coming, paint chips are falling, very dirty, trashy. And the way that they solve long wait lines is removing the clocks. <laughs> very sneaky, isn't it? <laughs> That's government efficiency for you. There. <laughs> um, so, have you ever seen that movie, They Live? Uh, Where the shirt comes from, the phrase, obey. Uh, I, I, I just got this shirt. So all I know is the Obey propaganda brand. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know, does that come from? Yeah, it comes from an old movie. Uh, so like a movie where like this guy is wearing sunglasses and he sees like all the real propaganda out there. Uh, yeah, the, that's why they have so many like so many sweatshirts and hats with someone wearing sweatshirts. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's piece right. to definitely check it out. I think yeah. it's very relevant. Um, and what government is trying to persuade us to do, like to vote, 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 you know. What a politician is then is this a political ruler, right? It's a stranger who can tell you what you can and cannot do with your own body, but you can't tell him or her the same, yeah. right? That's not freedom, that's, that's a ruler. That is a political rulership, right? Uh, nearly half your income being stolen from you when we're talking about taxes and you have no consent, that's tax labor, right? You can't cancel, you can't say no. Yeah. Uh, Wesley Snipes went into a cage for three years for not paying his taxes. Right, so if they could definitely send him to a cage, they could definitely target anyone else for that. Yeah. Right, um, but I guess you're more concerned, I guess, what we're doing here at the table. Uh, a little curious, yeah, what's going on? There? Um, so this we're a non political organization, uh -huh. 